Good afternoon, everyone. Get us start. Remember, we have been learning Chapter 6, Manufacturing Industries of our Geography uh, textbook. Uh, last time, we discussed about uh, different types of industries. Today, we shall take up one of the uh, types and uh, we'll learn in detail. Now let me present my screen. So today we shall learn about agro-based industries, one of the agro-based industries. So you have learned that agro-based industries are those industries which use agricultural products as a raw material. So we have some examples of agro-based industries given here, cotton, jute, silk, woolen textiles, sugar, that means sugar mills and edible oils. These are some of the examples of agro-based industries because these are based on agricultural raw materials. And here, uh, this figure number 6.3 tell us value addition in textile industry. About the meaning of value addition, you might have learned in economics classes also. So value addition Actually, uh, this is the increase in the value of a product or a service as it goes through the stages of uh, being developed and produced. So here, uh, these are the different stages of uh, in a textile industry. So here. Uh, in the first stage, a raw fiber is processed. Is processed. Okay, and uh, through the process of spinning, then yarn is produced. Then through the uh, process of weaving, knitting, then fabric, the cloth is produced. Then after dyeing and finishing, Okay, after stitching, uh, we have got the garments. So these are the different uh, stages uh, in the textile industries. And in each industry, the value of the item is increased. Okay, from the uh, raw fiber to the yarn, then from the yarn to the cloth, then for, to the garment. So the highest price you will get here. If you sell raw fiber, then you will get less money. If you sell the finished products, then you will get more money. This is what we call value addition. And now we have a textile industry, one of the agro-based industries. And this paragraph tells, okay, this paragraph tells the significance or the importance of textile industry. The textile industry occupies a unique position in Indian economy because it contributes significantly to industrial production, then employment generation and the foreign exchange earning. So textile industries contribute a lot in the production process and production of items then it contributes in the employment generation, then it earns foreign exchange. So it is the only industry in the country which is self-reliant, that is self-sufficient and complete in the value chain that is from raw material to the highest value added products. That means India can uh, produce everything, okay? from the raw materials up to the garments okay uh, we can uh, process it completely uh, so this is 
the only industry in the country which is a uh, self reliant okay so here as i told you it tells the importance of uh, this textile industry to the economy of india okay uh, any question from your side these textile industries pro uh, provide employment okay more than 40 million people directly and indirectly this industry uh, provide employment okay so it tells the importance of textile industry to the economy if you don't have uh, these questions then let us continue so cotton textile one of the uh, types of textile industry and in ancient India cotton textile were produced with hand spinning and uh, handloom weaving uh, techniques okay I think you are very much uh, familiar with uh, uh, this uh, handloom weaving in every household uh, there was a time that uh, handloom okay handloom weaving uh, was done still it is doing nowadays and after the 18th century power looms uh, came into use actually here in the cotton textile industry we have three main uh, sectors the first one is the handloom sector okay the second one is the power loom and third one is the mill sector so the handloom let me show you uh, this uh, for some photographs okay so here uh, this is a photograph showing uh, this loin loom okay hand loom one of the simplest uh, technique done okay in the hill areas then here uh, we have uh, this hand loom okay this is an example of hand loom done uh, in the valleys and uh, here uh, this is a photograph showing power loom okay this is a photograph showing power loom here it is uh, using uh, this power electricity okay and all everything is mechanical run by machine weaving is done by machines then we have uh, one more photograph actually this is also a power loom a local mat okay mat in uh, Manipur and the uh, third one is the mill sector okay uh, see here uh, this is uh, a photograph showing uh, this mill sector and uh, here this is also photograph showing mill sector okay and this is another one a mill sector okay actually in the mill sector everything is done from the uh, the spinning up to the garment and this is another scene of mill sector so in the history we learned that uh, these our traditional industries suffered cotton textiles suffered a setback during the colonial period because they could not compete with the mill mat cloth from England that you have learned in uh, history classes okay so in England uh, cloth was mat using machines mills power looms and mills and here in India it was mat okay by hand and uh, hand looms so we could not compete and that is why this industry suffered a setback and here a very important information is given the first successful textile mill was established in Mumbai in 1854 okay so you may note it first successful textile mill was established in Mumbai in 1854 maybe ask in MCQ question objective type questions
either the place or the year and here uh, okay this line tells why uh, these cotton textile industries are concentrated mainly in Maharashtra and Gujarat okay a question may be asked from here uh, why was uh, cotton industry, cotton textile industry concentrated in uh, Maharashtra, in the state of Maharashtra and Gujarat and here the answer is given here number one is the availability of raw cotton see Maharashtra and Gujarat these are cotton growing areas okay cotton growing areas so the raw material is available very easily then market so big cities are located in these two states which provide market okay then transport including accessible port facilities railways are well developed highways are well developed and uh, port facilities okay international port major port facilities are available in these two states for export then cheap labor is easily available then moist climate so Maharashtra and Gujarat these are uh, located on the sea coast okay and that is why there is enough water vapor in the air which is very much uh, suitable for location of the textile uh, industries if the air is dry then the threats are broken frequently however uh, moisture is enough okay uh, in the atmosphere and that is why uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat are very much suitable for establishment of these uh, quarter textile industries. Any question from your side, boys and girls? Okay, if you don't have uh, questions, then let me continue. So this industry has close link with agriculture. Okay, relation between this uh, textile industry, cotton textile industry and agriculture. It has a very close relationship with agriculture and uh, provide a living to the farmers. Okay, this cotton textile industry provides a living to the farmers because uh, farmers will grow the cotton and uh, it will provide raw material to the industry so it provides a living to farmers then cotton ball pluckers okay it provides employment to the cotton uh, ball pluckers then workers engage in uh, ginning then uh, spinning and weaving okay i see uh, ginning means i think you may be knowing uh, this is the process of separating the seeds from the cotton with a cotton gin a device okay ginning that is to separate the cotton seeds then spinning you know uh, this is the process of converting uh, these cotton fibers into yarn or thread and weaving so weaving so this is a process of making a woven material uh, on a loom maybe a hand loom power loom or this mill okay and dyeing that is the coloring of the material the cloth then designing packaging tailoring and uh, sewing so all these process all these works give employment to the people okay from the uh, the zinning uh, up to the shoeing that is zinning then uh, spinning then weaving dyeing that is coloring designing packaging tailoring stitching all these give employment to the people okay so the the industry by creating demands support many other industries this cotton textile industry also support many other industries such as uh, chemicals and dyes okay packaging materials and engineering works 
engineering work mean making of these machines tools and implements and machines okay cotton textile industry supports other industries like chemical and dyes because dyes and chemicals are used in the cotton textile industry these chemicals and dyes will provide will provide raw material to the cotton textile industry then packaging material then engineering works and this uh, while spinning continues to be uh, centralized in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu weaving is highly concentrated uh, sorry highly decentralized uh, to provide score for incorporating traditional skills and designing of weaving in cotton silk and then jari embroidery etc so it means that uh, spinning is highly centralized that means spinning is mainly done in these three states okay in the three states of maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu spinning that is the making of fiber sorry making of thread is mainly done in uh, three states maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu whereas weaving is highly decentralized that means it is done throughout the india in different parts of india weaving is done in the household level in the this uh, handloom sector in the powerloom sector as well as in the mill sector okay it is highly decentralized it is uh, done in the household level also okay uh, so here in the weaving process we are incorporating traditional skills like uh, these designs of weaving okay every locality has a design okay of embroidery then zari work okay you know zari actually zari work is an intricate uh, intricate art of weaving uh, this uh, using threads made of fine gold or silver okay weaving is done weaving in the embroidery is done using uh, these fine threads made of gold and silver i will show you one photograph of zari work okay here so this is an example of zari work here these fine threads of gold and silver are used in weaving process okay then uh, here another uh, zari work this is another zari work and uh, here this is another one okay this is gold thread embroidery so these are done in the household levels india has world class production in spinning but weaving supplies low quality fabric as it cannot use much of the high quality yarn produced in the country okay because weaving is done by handloom powerloom and the mill sector as i have shown you earlier see let me repeat india has world class production in spinning so in the production of this thread in the yarn okay the quality is world class very good quality but weaving supplies raw, uh, low quality fabric since weaving is done at different places in the villages in the different part of india okay the quality of the fabric is not uh, that of world class that is the point mentioned here because that weaving done in the household level okay cannot use much of the high quality yarn produced in the mills okay weaving done in the households weaving uh, done uh, using handloom then loin loom okay cannot use much of the high quality yarn produced in the machines and that is why uh, these the weaving supplies low quality fabric that is cloth at the same time see hand spun khadi you know khadi 
So khadi is also a coarse uh, homespun cotton cloth, okay, uh, made, uh, mapped in India. Uh, provide uh, large employment to weavers uh, in their homes as a cottage industry. And that is why the high class uh, threads produced in the spinning mills cannot be utilized okay, totally in our country. Uh, up to here, any question? Up to here, any question? Nobody is responding. Okay, if you don't have questions, then let me continue. Say here, one signpost question is here. Why is it important for our country to keep the mill sector lumens lower than the power loom and the hand loom? Okay, why is it important for our country to keep mill sector lumens lower than power loom and the hand loom? Any idea? We have to keep the mill sector lumens, that is the production of cloth in the mill sector must be kept lower than the uh, production of cloth in the power loom and the hand loom. Why? mainly for employment okay if cloth is mainly produced using uh, mills then uh, employment okay there will be employment problem unemployment problem in the country so to generate employment in every household uh, power loom and the hand loom sector must be kept higher than the uh, mill sector just to keep uh, employment okay just to give employment and about export uh, export of the uh, these cotton uh, yarn and fabrics in their export yarn to japan okay mainly to japan then other importers other buyers of cotton uh, goods from india are usa then united kingdom russia france east european countries nepal singapore sri lanka and african countries so these are the buyers of cotton goods from India and in that process we earn foreign exchange. And as we discussed earlier, we have a large share in the world trade of cotton yarn. Okay, mainly in the selling of the uh, cotton yarn trade, uh, we have a large share in the international trade. Our spinning mills are competitive at global level, as mentioned earlier, and capable of using all the fibers we produce. So our this the quality of the thread produced in the spinning mills are of very good quality, okay, and are competitive at a global level and are capable of using all fibers we produce. The weaving then a knitting then processing unit cannot use much of high quality yarn that is produced in the country that as mentioned earlier okay uh, weaving and knitting uh, all these are decentralized weaving knitting these are done in different places in india in the household levels as a cottage industry as a uh, handloom okay uh, then as a power loom okay in uh, different places in the different places of India a uh, weaving and knitting is done and that is why uh, the high quality yarn produced in the mills cannot be utilized properly okay that we just discussed earlier and there are some large uh, and modern factories uh, in these segments but but most of the production is fragmented in the small units and we scatter to the local market so weaving and knitting are mainly scattered in different villages okay to meet the local market and that is why this mismatch is a major drawback for the uh, this cotton uh, industry that means 
uh, this weaving and knitting is highly decentralized and done in different villages to meet the local demand, not for the international demand. So this is a major drawback uh, for the uh, cotton uh, textile industry. As a result, many of our spinners export cotton yarn, while apparel garment manufacturers have to import fabric. Okay, so the spinner, the spinning mills in India are mainly exporting, they are exporting uh, this cotton yarn. Okay, and here, uh, this is just an example of value addition, okay. This is an example of uh, value addition. Uh, suppose that a yarn is sold at rupees 85 per kg, if it is sold as a trouser, as a pain, long pain, okay, it passes it uh, faces rupees 100 per kg so value addition is there at every stage from fiber to yarn then to fabric to garment okay if you sell uh, yarn then you will get only 85 rupees per kg if the yarn is converted into a, a trouser then you can sell at the price of 800 or more even 2000 5000 okay that means there is value addition at every stage from the making of fiber uh, to the making of uh, this fabric and garment so here in the last paragraph okay in the last paragraph you will find uh, some problems uh, related with the cotton textile industry okay see let us read although we have met a significant increase in the production of good quality long staple cotton the need to import is still felt so we are producing a long staple uh, cotton but still we need to import uh, this uh, yarn from other countries another problem is that power supply is erratic not regular okay electricity supply power supply is erratic and machinery needs to be upgraded in the weaving and processing sectors in particular the machines used in the mill are old okay and they need to be upgraded and other problems are uh, the low output of labor the productivity of labor is low okay the productivity of labor is low the laborers are not skilled and another problem is that there is stiff competition uh, with the synthetic fiber industry synthetic fiber okay for example that uh, fi uh, fiber made from the petrochemicals like nylon and terylene okay terul so these uh, fibers uh, made from the petrochemicals are more durable than wrinkle free okay and uh, popular and that is why there is a very stiff competition uh, okay uh, this industry cotton tesla industry with the synthetic fiber industry So any question uh, boys and girls? This map, okay, this map shows the location of different textile industries okay different textile industries uh, in india you may see the index see here black dots represent cotton textiles then rate one shows woolen textile then this symbol okay uh, a dot within a rectangle shows silk textile so whenever you are free location of these industries okay uh, maybe observe so this is 
a cotton textile industry and what is there in Varanasi silk textile like this okay you have to read this map okay if you don't have any question regarding uh, cotton textile industry let us stop here for today uh, please don't forget to send your names in a whatsapp group for attendance thank you very much for joining my class